Welcome to this GiftWorks video. My name is Jonathan Lehman and this is the third video in a three-part video series on the power of smart lists. And the first video is part of this video series that defined the smart list, explaining what it is and what it's not. And I also showed how to create the various types of smart lists that are available within GiftWorks. And the second video is part of this video series. I showed the many areas within GiftWorks that smart lists can be used and how powerful that can be. In this video, I'm going to review some of the advanced features or advanced concepts of smart lists. So let's get started. Let's begin to sign into GiftWorks. I'm going to click on smart list. We'll go ahead and create a smart list. I'm going to create a donor smart list. I'm going to select the criteria of all, all those donors from the state of California. When I do this, I look at this list and I, I'm aware that Sharon Batinich is also one of my donors and she's from California. I'm, I'm not sure why she's not showing up. This is, gives me an opportunity to explain an important concept that smart lists by default do not include affiliate donors. So let me include the donor affiliate column show you that all these donors that are included in the smart list are, are, are donors, are not affiliate donors. As I said, by default, affiliate donors are not included within smart list. As in within many areas of GiftWorks, affiliate donors are not included. If you want to show affiliate donors within a smart list, you need to explicitly um, request them. So in this case, I would refine my California criteria. I would append more. I would click more to select a criteria category. I would go into my development info, select the donor affiliate donor criteria, and say I want both donors and affiliate donors. You'll see it goes from 71 to 74 donors. And I now have Sharon Batinich. So keep that in mind. We have, we have customers who wonder sometimes why certain donors aren't showing up. Make sure that if perhaps there's some donors that are affiliate donors that, that you need to explicitly include. Another feature I want to show is that when you customize a smart list, in addition to uh, including selecting which columns to include and the order of those columns, you can also group by a column. There's no totaling with SmartList, but you could group all your donors, in this case, say by profile. And it gives you a list. It shows, it shows all your donors organized by profile, grouped by profile. So let's click Next. One of the, uh, one of the other real nice advantages with smart, really nice advantages with SmartList is when you get to the name and save your SmartList page, you can actually, rather than saving it, naming and saving it, you can actually, if this is just a temporary SmartList, maybe you just want to use one time, you can actually click on Browse This List without saving it, and you can run many of the, many of the same features, really all the same features. You can export this list, you can update the items um, from this list, you could maybe add all these donors to a group or add a note for them. You could run a report for this list. You could send you could send a mailing to this list. You could print labels or envelopes. Very powerful. Just a temporary smart list. When you're done using it, it's not saved. It doesn't need to be added to your list of smart lists. Just lets you temporarily use that smart list. Another area where you can temporarily use a smart list is in the settings area. Uh, manage deleted records. We showed this. We showed this deleted delete. I showed this delete smart list content, contents option in the previous video. But you can also, in here, rather than using a, uh, an existing smart list, you can just create a temporary custom smart list. So there's a couple areas where you can use, you can create temporary smart lists, which, which provide um, a lot of flexibility and, and, and not cluttering up your, your list of smart lists. Let me, let me back into my, the smart list I was working on, the temporary one. And this was a temporary smart list. If I, if I just went all, on about my business and never saved it, this would never be saved. I can actually go in and edit the smart list. In this case, I'm going to actually go through and edit. I am going to save it because I'm going to demonstrate something else. So we'll just call this my California donors. And I'm going to share that list. I'm going to save it. So you'll see now whenever, you know, whenever I bring this list, it saved it with my grouping in the columns the way I defined it. I'm signed on as Adam Lawrence. If I go ahead and sign out and sign in as somebody else, sign in as Cindy Smith. You'll see that smart list should be available because I sh because it was shared by Adam, and you can see that it, it comes up exactly the way it was defined within the smart list. So the criteria was the same, the way it visually is displayed is the same. But if I don't like some, of the, if I don't like visually how it's displayed, I don't maybe like the list of columns or I don't like the grouping. Um, Cindy can actually customize that and can, and can say I don't want to group it and I don't want to include that donor affiliate donor column. And so now whenever she views this smart list. It's going to look the way it's going to look the way she defined. It doesn't change the rules as far as what's included. It doesn't change any of their criteria as far as what's included in the smart list. But it can change how she visually displays that smart list. So it would still look the same for Adam if he signed him. If at any point in time Cindy decides that that uh, she would like to return it to that base definition, she can click customize and she can click reset and it'll reset that that visual display to the way it was defined when that smart list was created um, by Adam. So you can see that each individual user can at least customize 
um, how that column, the visual aspects of that smart list, what columns are included, and whether it's grouped, and, uh, and she could change the sorting and so forth. Let me show you another powerful feature. Let me um, I mean, let me create a smart list. I'm going to create a donor smart list, and I'm going to just say all those that have given a um, total amount greater than they've given some donations. Here's all my donors who've given donations, and I'm going to customize my columns. I'm going to get rid of everything but display name and add some additional columns. Within our donor information, oh, aggregate information, uh, not only can you select on their overall giving, their overall total giving or average giving or their largest donation, you can also do it for four predefined periods, their current year, their current fiscal year, the previous year or the previous fiscal year, and the fiscal year is defined within the settings area, their fiscal time period, and you can click OK. So there's four defined, four defined periods that are available. You can actually I can remove this criteria and I can actually uh, uh, do a selection on that. So I can say all those at the current year total donations are greater than $500. So it actually has the ability to do a selection on that. And that's pretty powerful in itself. But with Donor Smart List, we also provide this options tab, which even extends that functionality even more. Within this options tab, we give you the ability to specify up to four of your own um, time periods that you would like to do analysis. Uh, so it will summarize donations for each donor within for that time period. It comes with the uh, default of the last 30 days, last three months, last six months, and last 12 months for this period. So if you would customize right now and look at those columns, you would see that down there you would actually have those periods also as columns and you could also have those as criteria. But the thing that makes this really powerful is you can define these periods to whatever you want them to be. So let's say I wanted to find this for the four quarters within 2009. So I could say 2009. I can name this. So I say 2009 quarter one. I have a whole bunch of predefined periods I can I can I can select, or I can actually select my own period. So I'm going to define period one, uh, quarter one within 2009. So I've gone ahead and I've defined the four quarterly periods within 2009. I have my 2009 quarter one, 2009 quarter two, and I define that custom period the way it should be defined. And I want to show you that now if I go in and I customize my columns, scroll down here, I'm going to actually remove my current year giving, remove my current year fiscal giving, remove my previous year giving and previous fiscal year. You'll notice that all these uh, additional columns now have my, the names as I've defined them. So I'm going to add my giving for my four quarters to my smart list. So I can see my quarterly giving for the four quarters within 2009. What makes this powerful is I can also do selection on these periods. So I, actually go, I can go back to my show criteria. I can remove this criteria and I can add my criteria set. And I could say donation history. And I could say period one total donations, which is my quarter one, is greater than zero. So let's say I want to see all those that gave in each quarter in 2009. So I could say greater than zero. I could refine this and append the criteria and select the criteria again and say period two to total donations greater than zero. So I, get it, I went ahead and I, and I appended the, the additional criteria. So all four periods donations are greater than zero. So this would uh, define those donors that have given in all four quarters. Now, if you can see right now um, that, that the only two that should qualify should be Mark and Harry. So I click Done. That's what I get. What makes this, e what makes this even more powerful is I can define these periods however I want them, but it includes all the donations for that period. But wh what makes this even more powerful is we included the option to get subsets of the, um, to get a subset of those donations within those time periods based on campaign, appeal, and or fund. So I could select any one of a series of, of campaigns that, that should be included, any series of, of appeals, or any series of funds. And so any th if I don't select anything here, then it just would include all donations. If I select some campaigns, it would have to match those campaigns. Or appeals, it would have to also match any of those appeals I select. So let me give you an example. So in this case, I'm going to select the campaign of annual campaign. So now it's going to only include the donations within all those periods. And so that this, this for the annual campaign. And you would do that actually for each period. And you can see now when I did that, that 
So for each of these periods, I can give a subset of the donations that are included. And you can see now, um, I only have Harry Barber left. So let's actually go ahead and save that. So you can actually save that list. I'm going to show you if I look at uh, if I look at Harry, and I look at all his donations, you'll see that they were for the annual campaign, so he was included. And if you remember the other donor, originally that was included was Mark Arm. If I look at his donations, you can see his donations are not for the they're for the technology campaign. So you can see that when I added campaign to that, it made it even more powerful. I can do analyze of my donors giving over at a specific time period. Uh, including campaign and appeal and uh, funds. So that's very powerful. So I hope this video series has been helpful and helps in some way to help your organization fulfill its mission. Thank you for watching.